me remind everyone that this, that this event is being recorded. And I'd like to remind our attendees that you will be muted throughout um, the event. However, you may introduce yourself via the discussion board on the Profound Impact platform, where you may also submit questions. Our team will try to address them during the webinar or directly via the discussion board. Now we have plenty planned for you in the next hour. First will be our fireside chat with Dr. Faridan Handelopper, followed by two presentations by Profound Impact team members, Brian and Rob, and then we'll wrap up the webinar. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome Joanne Shoveler, Vice President of Advancement at the University of Waterloo to introduce Faridan. Joanne. Thank you so much, Sherry. I very much appreciate uh, your introduction and the opportunity to participate in this exciting event. I am really pleased to introduce Farad and Hamdalaper, who served as the sixth president and vice chancellor of the University of Waterloo from 2010 to 2021. As an engineer, educator, and leader over the span of his career in research and higher education, Faridin is a professor of mechanical engineering with a PhD in chemical engineering from the Technical University of Nova Scotia after earning his bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from the Technical University of Istanbul. As Waterloo's president, he was devoted to fostering excellence in academics and research with a dedicated to developing an innovative culture committed to experiential education. Through his stewardship, the University of Waterloo continued to build an outstanding reputation as a world-class innovation university. Throughout his career, Faridin has been an active researcher in thermal fluids and energy engineering, a passionate teacher and an academic administrator. He has authored hundreds of scientific and academic publications and supervised over 50 graduate students. Named a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Engineering, in 2014, I'm sorry, uh, he has served in various academic and administrative roles and on many roles and committees and boards, including the chairman of the board of directors for AMTD International and an independent director for AMTD Group based in Hong Kong, an active member of the Sorbonne University Strategic Orientation Committee since 2000. Uh, 14. He was named a specifically elected fellow of the Royal Society of Canada in 2018 in recognition of his valuable contributions to promoting the objectives of RSC in ways that contributed significantly to Canadian society. In acknowledgement of his leadership in education and innovation, he was awarded the L'Enseigné de Chevalier de Palme Académie by the French Republic in February 2020 and the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Medal in January 2013. Now I will speak to what motivates Faradin personally as a global citizen and dedicated champion of education. He believes passionately ensuring that the impact of university education, research, and scholarship on our broader society is maximized through constant reform and innovation in the higher education sector. He is a leading advocate for the value of basic research and its relevance to academic excellence, economic prosperity, and social development. He was very proud to have been one of the 10 Global University of Presidents and nominated to the United Nations He for She Impact 10 by 10 by 10 campaign to engage boys and men in the cause of gender equity. He also served as chair of the Waterloo Global Science Initiative. An engaging storyteller, football enthusiast, and man dedicated to his family, friends, and country, I have been honored to work closely with Barrett in these last five years as he reimagined the impact of education broad and with a particular emphasis on equity, diversity, and inclusion. He thinks broadly and deeply, because passionately, and these are both characteristics of an outstanding leader in education. Sherry, back to you. We're looking forward to the uh, fireside chat. Thank you, Joanne. I appreciate your, uh, your introduction. And now, Faridan, welcome. And thank you for joining me by the fire. 
today to talk about uh, your time as an impact champion for the United Nations He for She 10 by 10 initiative. I know the audience wants to hear more about this initiative. Please tell us about it. And in particular, will you please share your personal motivation for your involvement? Uh, first, uh, <clears throat> Joanne, so good to see you. And thank you so much for your very kind introduction. You were very generous uh, and kind with your introduction. And Sherry, and uh, thank you and profound impact for having me uh, to have this conversation. It's a very important, very timely, very alive conversation that we need to keep going. Uh, so thank you for that. I'm delighted to be here and I'm delighted to be talking to you uh, today. I think um, when you talk about motivation, uh, the motivation has always been there that uh, everybody needs to make a very serious effort. We need to get out of whatever the zone we are comfortable in and be an active participant in some very important issues. And gender equity, uh, uh, to be put, put in the broadest term, was one of those. Uh, let me turn my timer on before I forget. Uh, <laughs> with that, uh, when I joined the University of Waterloo, I thought that many things clicked there because I was joining an incredible institution with tremendous potential and in its young history had made incredible <clears throat> impact in many, many uh, people's lives, but at the same time, uh, broader than that. <clears throat> However, there were areas that needed attention. Uh, they were left unattended, not particularly intentionally, but out of complacency and other reasons that maybe somebody else will do it. And it was time to bring my motivation, my determination combined with the universities that this university has always been a leader. We've done things that nobody else either thought of or there to do. <clears throat> and it was time for us to say in, a, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, mildest term, to scratch, scratch our own back if, without you know, counting on others, but at the same time be a model and make sure that we will, we will do it in a way very, very characteristic of the University of Waterloo. So it was the right moment, uh, not in terms of it, we were late doing it, but it was the right time and right place to do it. That was the motivation to do something that had been an issue, and it was time to go boldly into it. Thank you. Uh, when we talked earlier, you mentioned your uh, your mother and the influence that she had on you. Can you just speak a little bit to that? Yeah. Um, thanks for uh, bringing this up. It's not always easy for me to talk about this, but I think um, it is a very good example. My mother uh, raised five boys on her own. Um, uh, I was the youngest and uh, uh, didn't even uh, meet my father. He died when I was not even a year old. So that was her motivation to raise her five boys in the best way she could. Um, but, uh, and she did a marvelous, marvelous job. But the part that I didn't know about my mother was her incredibly kind person, um, uh, broad, broadest thinker, a uh, very liberal person. Uh, but she, at one point, I was surprised how angry she was to, towards her own father, uh, who denied her um, education beyond her elementary school, simply uh, because she was a girl. And the, the justification was you're going to get married, you don't need education, and you had your basic elementary education. Mm -hmm. That always stayed with her. Woman who would, in the middle of you know preparing uh, food, will answer my math questions that I was I was struggling with. That's that's how brilliant she was. So uh, that was one part. And second part, uh, I won't go into details. She made me a promise. Uh, she said, I have never asked anything of you, but you're going to make sure that your brother's daughter will get her university education. His son uh, is a boy. He will, he, will, he will get it, but 
Uh, I don't want her to be compromised because she's a girl. And uh, that's that was another thing. I think it was always um, something that um, I don't want to use it as well. That's the only reason why I, I became so involved and passionate about it. But it was right there in front of my eyes, very much connected to me and demonstrated by the person whom I absolutely, absolutely dearly loved, who had suffered because of that stupid barrier that was put in front of her. And I always imagined her, if that hadn't happened, my gosh, she would have gone to places that I, I, I just would have been absolutely fantastic. So you extrapolate it, you multiply it by hundreds of thousands of similar examples. You yes. understand how horrible it has been for one gender that how it was, it was neglected uh, intentionally. We put barriers uh, to block them from accessing uh, education and being able to make an incredible difference that they would have been able to. So you continue to be an advocate for, for women and the he for she, and that's what this initiative is about for yes. men, he, to help the she uh, to work together. And 10 by 10 by 10 is 10 countries, 10 organizations, 10 university presidents, uh, this uh, fantastic initiative. And I understand each organization established specific goals for the five years of this uh, program. Now, obviously at Profound Impact, uh, we are about setting goals and measuring those goals for the global impact. Can you share with us some more about the University of Waterloo's goals and how they were measured? Sure, I think um, as you were describing it, I, um, I, I, I couldn't help uh, thinking that one of the reasons why I, I became so involved and so passionate again about uh, he for she and 10 by 10 by 10, the opening statement was that gender and women's issues are not just women's issues, it's yeah. everybody's. And we had to equally or more than given what we have done in the past, given my grandfather as an example, we needed to even do more. Uh, so that was one important thing for me. Second, um, University of Waterloo, they, they, I mean, again, it's one of those things, they came to us, we went to them. I think it was, again, the right alignment. But at that time, my objective was always long-term. I don't want to put a couple of band-aids or aspirins there. Uh, that will look good. It was about long term. How do we make incredibly important cultural shift at the university and use that cultural shift as an as an important as a very important example to demonstrate that things can change. Things can change for a better. And at the same time, how we do it was important. So. Many organization, as you mentioned, it was first of all, incredibly important privilege, I should say, to be among those 30 incredibly um, uh, important leaders uh, from the government side, prime ministers, from uh, uh, business side, CEOs of global organizations, and from my uh, colleagues from all around the world. And I was the only, of course, uh, uh, president from Canada being that group. Um, we didn't want to mirror everything that we we're doing. Every institution was giving freedom of, you know, what are your most important uh, object goals uh, to fulfill your objective. Uh, so I, um, of course, at that time, um, a person whom initially I had um, uh, appointed as my special advisor in women and gender issues, Dr. Diana Perry, and with her incredible participation and involvement and uh, providing the bridge between the university and UN women, um, we said, what will be the areas that will be most characteristic at the University of Waterloo that, excuse the expression, we suck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we, 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 we need to attend to those but not just individually or isolated goals, how do it, when they are all connected and come together, it will bring the university 
right from the perception, cultural shift, and being able to show itself as a leader, not as a follower, or, or, or uh, their lack of uh, progress um, uh, uh, in this area. So we picked three areas that um, we thought will be incredibly impactful and demonstrate best uh, as to how we can make progress. Uh, we picked a number of women in senior academic administration. I will expand on all three uh, briefly. Second one was, again, faculty members, uh, women faculty members, mm -hmm. especially at a university that is right or wrong as, as uh, perceived to be a STEM heavy institution, mm -hmm. which are areas that are historically dominated by men. And third, again, how do we increase the percentage number of girls and women in STEM disciplines. So we picked those. And then the second thing was, let's not just talk about them. Let's put some real numbers, real numbers and some deadlines. When are we going to meet our goals? Uh, uh, so we picked those. Uh, the reason why they were important, uh, <clears throat> Sherry, the, part of this whole exercise was how do we educate ourselves? How do we understand things better? Then how do we take ownership of some of the issues that we knew, we, we knew all along that they were there, but kind of relied on others to find solutions. Said, so, okay, we are the ones who will have to correct those. Um, women, uh, first, there's, there's, there was the uh, perception or notion of the University of Waterloo is a, is a male-dominated institution. It's not really. Uh, this is this. I, I when I got involved heavily, I talked to people directly. I talked to some women leaders directly, and I heard them directly from their mouth that you know, we don't know if University of Waterloo is, uh, is a women-friendly institution or welcoming institution. So said so we need to just absolutely demolish this perception and show the other way around. The second thing, there are significant differences in how men and women, you know, um, go or, uh, or present themselves and also uh, show interest in certain uh, areas. Um, as you would know, again, as, uh, as, a, as a very accomplished person in running institutions, um, that uh, it, is, it is a very involved, time-consuming uh, job to be a senior uh, person, either an academic institution or, uh, or, or in business. Um, and we need to recognize the differences, how you know, uh, we, we approach those. And most importantly, we needed to establish search committees. We needed to establish things that will be representative of the people we are trying to reach out. And yeah. from that search committees to interview processes uh, that uh, men will come. <laughs> I know from myself, <laughs> you know, guns blazing and, you know, you know, say, oh, this is what I've done. This is how I conquered this. I climbed the Mount Everest. It's, 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 it's a very different uh, um, way of uh, showing competency uh, for uh, between genders. But we knew that there were hundreds and hundreds of absolutely fabulous women out there who would do these jobs perfectly. So first we said, okay, we need to make sure that we will, we will change this. Today, if you look when <laughs> I left um, and Joanne is uh, one of them, uh, uh, six of my uh, vice presidents or equivalents, uh, six, uh, four out of six are women, are deans, six faculty deans, four of them are women. Uh, so, and it goes on and on. And we didn't do it because we said, hey, we need to pick those, uh, you know, role models or handpick them. They went there, they got their positions because they had what it took. They were better than anybody else. We, all we needed to do, make sure that we were opening our doors and enabling people to see that I can see myself in these jobs. I can yeah. see myself being at the university and not being feeling that I'm isolated, I'm alone. So that was important. Same thing applied to faculty. 
uh, again, in my, at my first town hall meeting at the University of Waterloo, and I was asked the question why we had so low percentage of women faculty, especially in STEM disciplines, the pro forma answer was, oh, well, because the, the, the pool is so shallow, it was horrible, horrible, that was a really bad answer. And I promised myself that point that when I come back here next year for another town hall, I will never use this answer. Uh, so made sure that uh, we, we open those up. And the thirdly, again, participation of women and uh, women, girls in STEM disciplines. And my gosh, you know, from science fairs to uh, all kinds of things. Then today in all three areas, we are, it's not over. It is not over. I will never <laughs> sit back and say, that, oh, we have, we have reached the nirvana and it's okay. No, it's not, it needs to continue. But I think we've made significant progress that the rest will have will come unless you know we we drop the ball. I hope. I well, know. well, you you mentioned the uh, uh, the the language that you you interview processing processes and and all of this that you have to take a look at and seeing it's, it's something that we're doing in these processes uh, deterring certain uh, you know minorities and and genders to apply for these. Uh, Lisa, you put up the data slide. Uh, you can see from data from the He for She 2019 impact report. Uh, I don't see it yet, but uh, uh, it'll be put up here in a second. Uh, that uh, the University of Waterloo has met many goals, uh, especially as you mentioned, the executive leaders, uh, including the deans and the vice presidents. And you see the undergrad and graduate female identifying student recruitment numbers, very strong. As you said, there's still need uh, to make progress in all of these areas. However, similar to other universities, there appears to be a challenge with the tenured professors. How do you believe the challenges in this specific area can be addressed in the short term, Faraday? Yeah, well, there are, again, uh, Sherry, I mentioned that everything I think of, I do as is, is, um, is in long term, it's long term, but our, our short term steps are very important to establish the trend towards those long term objectives. Um, I think we need to, first of all, uh, and we have been, we have been successful in doing that project a very different image of University of Waterloo to the whole world, that this is an incredibly, incredibly uh, important institution. We have done things that are, that were so courageous and daring, but we've done it, we're still doing it. But also this is a, this is an institution with an incredibly deep social conscience. It's not just about math, it's not just about engineering, it's, it's about everything, how we can make a difference for the better in the world. And that requires a much bigger, broader aspect. Our excellence in certain disciplines are parts of it, but not the whole thing. In there, once we do this, of course, gender equity and equality is a very important part. So that's number one, to make sure that everybody in the world knows where we stand in these areas. Number two, not just leave it with words and make it work. Reach out to high schools, reach out to secondary schools, reach out to elementary schools and get the ball rolling from that point onward. Because if you want to see a long-term change, that's where we have to start. At the yeah. same time, for short term, make changes, continue making changes at the university that provide a better environment, provide opportunities, and get rid of get rid of any any anything towards you know sexual violence you know make sure everybody is can be who they are and uh, live up to their uh, maximum potential by making sure that it is a welcoming safe environment. So those are the things that we will see whether it's the overall campus environment the things that will be related to our curriculum, things that will be related to what we do in our research areas and how we care for our students, for our staff and faculty members. They will all, when they all come together, I think we will see that 
we are heading towards a much better long-term future. Yes, great. Fair to just to shift gears a little bit here. Uh, you recently finished your 10 years, a decade, as the sixth president and vice chancellor at the University of Waterloo. Now I had the privilege of attending virtually one of the two surprise for you celebrations that the university hosted in your honor. I remember in particular that the comments by Dr. Tony, Tony Shan, one of your fellow university presidents who said that he sent you condolences when you were appointed president at Waterloo and recently sent you congratulations upon the end of your tenure. Now we, we know that Dr. Tan was saying this tongue in cheek, but what other moments during these celebrations do you especially remember? Yeah. Um, so Sherry, one of the architects of those surprise events is just with us now, uh, Joanne, <laughs> and I think she did. And um, I, I, it was quite moving. It was quite moving. I've gone through a lot of uh, events, a lot of things, but I can't. And uh, I learned over the years, um, I, I can very easily get emotional but I, uh, I, I learned how to mask it <laughs> to a degree. It was impossible to mask it at that event. It brought up all kinds of things. Being president of um, University of Waterloo, uh, Waterloo, one of the um, highest uh, you know, achievements or uh, accomplishments in my life uh, as, an, uh, as an academic administrator. So it was a, was a privilege. It was an incredible responsibility. Uh, can you imagine that you are, uh, uh, you were the, um, uh, together with everybody team, I never take, I, I never say that I, I did all my myself, I would have done absolutely nothing, I wouldn't be able to, had I not have worked with an incredibly, incredible team. But at, at the end of the day, um, it's it's up there, it's a, it's a lonely place, uh, nevertheless, and you have that responsibility um, that, this train is moving, it's on track, and can you move it faster? Can you get some different um, uh, you know, uh, destinations? And uh, at the same time, renew the uh, locomotive and the wagons and as it's moving, uh, and, uh, and not to derail it. Uh, so with that responsibility, it takes away incredible uh, energy uh, and time from your life, but at the same time, the rewards are fabulous. So. I was very much moved by everybody's participation comments, like uh, Tony Chen, my good friend. Um, uh, <laughs> that was wonderful. I had a feeling that I was I was not leaving the university. I was leaving the position that I had near, for eleven years with an incredible sense of accomplishment yeah. and uh, fulfillment. At the same time, if again, this is this is the softest, not the soft, but softest spot in my heart is the students. What they were able to say, what they were able to uh, uh, do there, I think it was one of the uh, most moving uh, pieces of those mm -hmm. uh, events for me. Um, I, I just, at the end of the day, we do all kinds of things. I'm not going to list them, but if it's not benefiting the students and it's not for them at the end of the day, I don't think that it will be doing our jobs fully. Now that, that, uh, that's interesting. We're focusing on equity and equality today, but the University of Waterloo highlighted in its spring 2021 magazine, nine other areas of impact during your leadership, including research, you know, Professor Strickland's Nobel Prize, Transformative entrepreneurship, the co-op education. Were there in Stockholm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, the global and alumni connections, economic impact, but you you also student support and development and mental health. I think those are it goes back to the students and making sure that they have the tools and they have what they need to both uh, physically and mentally to be able to uh, get their minds around their studies. In addition to equity. Uh, which we're focusing on today, which other areas, I know this is gonna be difficult, would be one that you are most proud of, the impact. Sherry, I, uh, just briefly, uh, I wanna go back to my mother. As, as, as I said, she raised five boys and quite often I would be there and somebody would say, well, which one is your favorite? And she will say, they all are. 
Yeah. And <laughs> we knew that there was one, just a little tiny bit, you know, more than the others, but she will never say it. Uh, for me, all nine are incredibly important. They are part of an entire system that really brings the uh, university uh, uh, forward, uh, enables it to leap forward, not just to move forward. So they are all interconnected and important. But if I were to single one out at the end of the day and say, well, what does it all mean? It's all about the students who are our current and future leaders. They are the ones who will make those profound impacts and in the world and therefore bring them forward and say that everything comes at the end connected to you. It's not just classroom teaching. It is not that it is from mental health and how you can benefit from research, how you can benefit from in experiential education, co-op and all of those things. I think um, they are there and I hope that I have fulfilled my promise to them that I will make a difference in their education and their lives, seeing themselves as leaders, not just as students, as leaders who will make a difference, a profound impact in the world. Wonderful. I'm going to take you and the uh, audience back one year ago today. Uh, we launched Profound Impact Day to honor my late husband, Dr. Scott Vanstone. Uh, the, the day was to not just on highlight his impact, but also his colleagues and collectively the University of Waterloo Math Faculty's continuous global impact. Uh, you were talking about this. It's the students. It's about, it, it, it's, a, it's very dynamic. It's not a static photo and this is all we have. It's continuously uh, uh, the growing and uh, uh, through the students, the faculty, the administration. And moving forward in a similar vein and continuing to, to look globally, Profound Impact is launching today an annual Impactful Actions Award. Now, Faraday, we know you love surprises, so I'm thrilled to celebrate your success and acknowledge your work with the first Impactful Actions Award. And I hope I can show this here to you, but the plaque says, presented to Faraday Handelopper for leaving a mark on the global community through his initiatives, influence, and impact. I will hand it to you virtually now, and you, uh, I'll get it to you later in person. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sherry. I'm, 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 I'm very much moved. Um, and um, um, thank you. It's, it's incredibly important. First thing I will do, I, I will share the news with my wife after we finish. Yes, it's, yes. it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. And uh, thank you for being our, our first recipient of this prestigious award. And Profound Impact has made a donation in your honor to the Student Wellness Fund, one of the three scholarships that was set up to honor your impact by the University of Waterloo. The Student Wellness Fund supports student success by ensuring students have access to resources that promote the physical and mental well being of those students. Now, Faridan, thank you again for your time today. We at Profound Impact and today's audience appreciate your time and um, your opening up to us. And we're thrilled to celebrate your impact. Now, we hope that you will stay in touch with us so that we can keep informed of your continued impact. Thank you again, my friend. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks for the opportunity to be able to speak to you and share these very important uh, things with, with the audience. So thank you. Thank you. Next, I welcome Brian Romanski to provide an overview and motivation of our Hack the North Pre-Hack Challenge. Now, Brian is an engineer and innovator with extensive experience in computer science and business development. In all of his fields he has worked Brian has applied user-centered innovation with a strong emphasis on understanding how technology can solve unmet needs and create new business value. I've had the privilege to work with Brian for many years. As the chief strategic advisor at Profound Impact, Brian is applying AI and data visualization to build strong technical communities and uncover stories of successful collaboration. Over to you, Brian. Well, thank you, Sherry. That was a great conversation and a hard act to follow, but um, I will take just a minute to, uh, to talk a little more about the, uh, the Hack North Challenge um, that, that uh, Profound Impact is sponsoring and 
uh, why we think it's important. Um, as, as Sherry mentioned, I have, uh, have a long history in, in user-centered design and, and users come in, in many forms. Um, users have many different capabilities and, and this challenge is really about making technology available to people of all abilities. So if you give me one second, I'm just gonna share my screen here. And I wanna just introduce, so Hack the North is a, uh, is a hackathon. It's the biggest hackathon in Canada. And it's a student run organization, Profound Impact. We are a sponsor of Hack the North this year. And uh, we're also sponsoring a special challenge. And that's what I wanna talk to you briefly about today. So those of you, uh, many of you are using the Profound Impact platform, which we're looking at right now on my screen, is a, a sample, a demo version of our site. Um, as you may know, Profound Impact is a platform designed to uh, help bring people together, to help share the stories and the impact of individuals and an organization. And we do a lot of that uh, storytelling through visualization, through graphics, through taking data that was otherwise hidden in databases or in servers or in somebody's notebook somewhere and making it visible, making it engaging, making it useful for, for people to better understand how they have had an impact. Now, as you may also know, uh, websites, web technology has been developed uh, you know, for your average computer user, but not every user uh, meets that, that same criteria. Some people are visually impaired, some people have different abilities, some people use special devices to help them navigate through the web. And there's technologies that make it easier for them to do that. The W3C is an organization that has established a lot of the standards on the, the web, and they've created a set of uh, standards around uh, making devices accessible, making websites accessible. You may notice that in our platform, we have on the bottom right, a little uh, switch, which you can enable, which enables a high accessibility mode. And quick on, on this homepage, you can see that by switching it on and off, some of the graphics change. Uh, these go to high contrast mode, which make them a little bit easier for people to see. Um, if you are interested in web development, you'll understand that our, our website is tagged with all the proper information so that it's easier for different types of web readers to understand the information. Uh, on a page like this, that is fairly standard, fairly easy to do. Where it gets interesting for us is if we look at one of our graphs. So as I mentioned, a key feature of our platform is the ability to visualize information. So what we're looking at here is an academic family tree. It's showing a complex network of relationships among people who were mentors or sponsors of, of other people's academic work, um, PhD programs in this case. As you can see, this is an interactive graph. I can hover over people to learn more about them. I can look at relationships and what kind of work they did together. Uh, this type of interaction is highly visual and uh, 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 interaction with the graphics is really hard to translate into an accessible form. You'll see that if I switch on the accessibility mode here, what we've done thus far is we've created a table that shows up. This table shows all the relationships that are highlighted in the graph above, but clearly navigating through this table, reading all of this information is not the same as seeing that visual layout and understanding the connections among the people. So our Hack the North challenge is to uh, engage hackers, engage creative thinkers into coming up with more useful, more engaging, more uh, practical ways to translate visual displays of complex information into really accessible, engaging forms so that all users can get the same level of understanding and insight from the information. Something much more useful than a, a simple table that, that lists information that you could get from you know, a phone book or, or other sites. Uh, you know, we have other types of graphs that we use. So if you're familiar with our platform, you'll understand that we also have graphs that look at networks of relationships among people, not just timelines. But um, what we're showing here is a large collection of alumni and uh, people have worked at the same uh, organizations, the same locations. Uh, and that's, yeah, there we go. So again, this is very complex visual information, very hard to translate that into a form that is accessible for all users. So again, as part of our Hack the North challenge, we're looking for hackers to find ways uh, to, to make this more engaging. And 
that can be taken many different forms. So people don't actually have to write code to solve this hack. They can just give us examples of here's a, you know, a PDF file or a, a hacked up uh, image of what they think the result should look like. We're looking for you know, any way for people to engage with us and give us you know, their best ideas. And we will be uh, giving out uh, an award. Um, so we, uh, you know, we're encouraging people and engaging with people to, to solve this very meaningful and, and useful problem, a problem that we really want to solve so that all users have access to uh, engage in graphical information that we present to the platform. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Sherry because we're going to give a little more info on things that we're doing behind the scenes at Profound Impact. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you, Thank you Brian. Uh, I, I want to say uh, this does go along with our theme today on equity, equality, equality, diversity, and inclus inclusive, inclusiveness. We want to include uh, these people who uh, would find it challenging to look at our visualization. You know, when I uh, founded Profound Impact, it was really that was what inspired me was saying and excited me was how could we do this? Could we do something in the visualization area and uh, uh, to bring the data to life and, that, and to inspire others? So I believe this, uh, this challenge is exciting because it's going to help us help us get there for, uh, to, to, to bring that data alive to all people. Our next presenter is Rob Darling, uh, Strategy and Business Development Advisor at Profound Impact. And he's gonna introduce our new product, uh, uh, Career Trajectory product. Now, Rob is an entrepreneur. Many people know him in the, in the community. He's passionate about building technology companies. He's actively involved in the technology community. Uh, in the Waterloo uh, region area, working with founders and their leadership teams as an advisor, coach, and strategist. You know, Rob has been around for a while. He looks quite young, but he is older than he looks. And he's built SaaS companies, amazing teams that have served one to five, one out of in, in five Canadians, as well as uh, people in 25 countries. And these products that he has uh, developed are used by prosumers as well as companies. You know, Rob it creates strategy. He breaks it into actionable steps. I love that. He attracts and grows amazing talent and inspires teams to achieve more than ever they ever thought possible. Rob, you're on. Thank you, Sherry, for the kind introduction. Um, Lisa, if we could just pull up uh, the first slide, that would be amazing. As we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, you know, one of the things that I'm really excited to announce today is a new product offering from Profound Impact. And it's called Profound Impact Alumni Career Trajectory. Um, Lisa, next slide, please. And what this product does is allows you to find and tell your impact stories through alumni career data without having to do surveys. We all know surveys are hard, they're hard to get responses. It gets you a really small sample size. Uh, and so we have a solution to that in this new product offering. Uh, next slide, please. So if you think of just Faraday as an example and his impact in his career, imagine if you took all your 2010 graduates uh, for a program, or you want to compare your co-op program to your, your non-co-op program, uh, imagine the data and the insights you can get from that aggregate data across all your alumni. Uh, next slide, please, Lisa. So the benefits to you as, as a customer is that you get real world data to inform your programming and tell your story. You, uh, you gain insights from the trends and career trajectory of your alumni, and it informs your strategy so you can create that strategy and inform your programming. It also then allows you to tell your story, tell the impact story of your graduates uh, at the aggregate or at the individual level. Uh, next slide, please, Lisa. Uh, so some example categories as we're working uh, with a prominent university in, in Canada that we've been able to pull out is the geography of uh, the alumni, the career progression and movement of those alumni, the current companies and company movement of the alumni, 
and gender and ethnicity differences uh, in the progression of alumni. Next slide, please, Lisa. In more detail, I'm not gonna go through all of these uh, in heavy detail, but some of the example questions you can have answered are, where in the world are my alumni? On average, how long does it take my alumni or how, are, how long does my alumni work at each company? Uh, how long does it take them to uh, be promoted in their first role? Uh, how long does it take them to be promoted to manager, director, AVP or VP? Uh, and how many alumni have jobs where they did uh, a placement. Now with each one of these stats, and we've done a, a sample uh, with one of the universities, we can split it out by gender and ethnicity and look at the differences between uh, females and males uh, or ethnicity uh, differences in their career progression. And that again can really help inform the strategy uh, for important work that people like Faraday and other groups are doing um, uh, to make sure that diversity, equity, and inclusion are uh, a part of their programming. Next slide, please, Lisa. Ah, there we go. Uh, so how it works. Uh, we securely combine your private data with public data using AI so that you can uncover actionable insights. So you provide us with some existing data on your graduates. We then use our proprietary algorithms to auto enhance that data from multiple online sources. And then we give you a dashboard and tools so that you can see the insights and trends uh, of your alumni. There's no technical knowledge or surveys required. Next slide, please, Lisa. She must be busy. Uh, to learn more, you can reach out to Cheryl. Um, uh, and her email is displayed here or any of the product uh, profound impact uh, team. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Sherry. Hey, thank you, Rob, uh, for sharing this about, about the uh, new career trajectory project. Uh, we want to say that uh, we're excited that, that we've launched this product. And uh, Rob has uh, been an inspiration for that. I hope everyone was able to see the slides and that there was a, some detail in it. And of course, we are recording this uh, webinar and uh, we can also put up the slides uh, on, our, on, our, on our platform later for people to take a deeper look at those. Thank you, Rob. Uh, thank you uh, again to our special guest, Dr. Faridan Handelopper. And thank you, Joanne uh, Shevler, for, for joining us today. I do appreciate that you spent some time with us today. And I hope that uh, maybe you learned something, I hope, today. <laughs> Great. And, uh, and thank you again, Rob and Brian. And you know, most of all, thank you to you, our guests, for attending. We do have a call to action. We have many ways to contribute. So see the how to contribute box on the platform. And in particular, we'd love for you to donate to one of the three scholarship funds in honor of Faridun. Now we had a social media contest and I'm excited to announce the winner of the drawing for a social media contest. And the winner is Indra Ramatar. Indra followed all of our contest rules and even shared our post on to her stories for additional entries. She will receive a, a Canadian $100 Amazon gift card. Congratulations, Indra, and thank you for your support. I wanna thank you again, our guest, uh, for spending this time with us, and we'll see you soon for our next webinar. Thank you, bye.